yeah, so this wall has been a huge work in progress. It's gone through many iterations. It still has it, things... Iterating? It is still iterating, <laughs> but the latest, uh, the latest status is that um, we have this board here, and this board is used to record primarily the student's curiosity, mm -hmm. um, which is why in the next iteration of this, I'm going to emphasize more this mm -hmm. aspect of it and maybe take out some other pieces, maybe just Wonder Words and Discoveries, mm -hmm. because I've found other ways to incorporate these, which you'll see soon. Okay. So I would probably split this into Wonder Words and Discoveries. Right, okay. And one thing that we did that Pete helped us out with was with the Wonder Words is we have Wonder Word forms now. So if they put a word on the Wonder Word wall, there's a form they fill out, and it just gives them, asks them to go a little deeper with their inquiry. So it says, like, I'm curious about the word, and this is where you write the word. The main thing I'm curious about is blank. I think my word is a base or complex. If you think it is complex, show at least one hypothesized word sum. If you think your word is a base, can you make a word sum with affixes or another base added to it? So this is building their independent curiosity inquiry skills, I think. And I, I remember yeah. that... that we were having conversations because be, kids were so excited about putting words on, mm -hmm. and but you guys have been doing the work. And I said, well, I think you, we can up the ante now of the question. If you're going to ask a right. question, one of the keys to being a good scientist is asking question, better questions, which means giving a bit of evidence um, for what you're thinking about. So instead of just okay. saying, you know... I'm curious Ooh. about odd. So, someone <laughs> just put, so rather than just putting ODD up on our question word wall... Yeah. All of a sudden, this brings out so much more specificity yeah. with what they're trying to figure out. Uh, odds and oddity down there, and that's and so this idea of giving evidence of what you're thinking as you write that, you just get more ideas, right? Yeah. And so, so, we're, so that's one piece of building in student curiosities and questions. The other piece is that you know we we get this filled up very quickly, and, and you know we have to reduce it and figure out how to deal with it, and then it fills up very quickly. And there's always that tension of there are certain things that are teacher driven that mm -hmm. we do in SWI. Mm -hmm. For example, we've been doing a lot with suffixing conventions in second grade. So we and we spend a few weeks on each convention because it's very kids discover the convention embedded within the word sums rather than us giving them the word sums or giving them the conventions. So changing why when you change a Y to an I and when you don't, when you uh, when you double the final consonant of a base and when you don't. When you drop that single silent E or the non-syllabic E, and when you don't. And those are important spelling conventions that we focus on through inquiry, but they're teacher-driven. So the question for us was, how do we honor all of this curiosity? Mm -hmm. So this is how we've brought it out, and then over here is how we honor it. Okay. So what we do is we spend three 15-minute periods a week working on this part of it, and it, it, you know, following the inquiry of one word or one question. And those are, that's not part of our SWI time. We just happen to have kind of 15 minute little chunks during our week that we've been able to carve out. And essentially we go through these four questions. These are the four questions that uh, Pete gave us of, uh, you know, I, I, I really think they're simple and very direct and very helpful for like going through a scientific process of analyzing a word and learning about a word. So our kids aren't ready to start doing that independently. So instead, we're doing it as a group 15 minutes a week. So I picked a word off this, this past week. I picked a word off our question wall. It was hypnosis. <laughs> I so always, that, was, that was a word that the kid was curious about. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I offered three uh, possible spellings. The stars were not there, and the box was not there yet when we opened this up. Nothing was written under meaning, structure, or related words, mm -hmm. but these titles were here mm -hmm. as we went into the first investigation. So I chose to misspell hypnosis in those ways because I knew down the line I wanted to talk about that why. Mm -hmm. okay. So therefore, I was playing mostly with that I sound in different ways of making that I sound. Mm -hmm. um, so we did that. The kids talked. We did a think pair share. Which one do you think is correct? Why do you and, and explain why to your neighbor? They, you know, they they decided this was the most correct one. We checked it with the dictionary. It is correct. So the stars are for unconventional spellings or unconventional 
language. Mm -hmm. So they know that, they know what the stars mean, and then we box that. Then the next one is we ask, well, can you use this word in a sentence? Can you define this word? And these are kid quotes of how they yeah. defined it. And it was helpful that we had some conversation about it because there's some disagreement and there are some misconceptions about what it means. Yeah, so yeah. There's an interesting kind of like content-based discussion about hypnosis there. Cool. And then we got to structure. And this was interesting yeah, because I remember this. we had three <laughs> hypotheses for the structure at that time. And that means that I ahead of time had done some etymological research on this, like just quickly going on Etym Online just to see what's, what was going on there, doing some quick lat dict uh, to see if there's any Latin roots. Turns out it has Greek roots. So that was helpful for me to have a little background knowledge on mm -hmm. it. But even from my own research, I didn't, I didn't know what the word sounds yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. So, which, we, which one thing is really cool is because you're diving into this without knowing the answer, which no. is actually what inquiry is about. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, so we went in, we came up with these three possibilities. We couldn't come to a consensus because they all seemed somewhat plausible. Mm -hmm. So we decided to pause on the structure, leave these. We didn't put the stars there yet because we didn't know. Mm -hmm. So these hypotheses were out there. And we decided to go down to related words. So using the word searcher, mm -hmm. we were able to, and the kids' own brainstorm, able to brainstorm some related words to this, uh, this word. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, the kids were able to look at this list, and their challenge from there was, can you f hypothesize what the base would be using this list? And because they understand what a base is, and that you know it has to have the same spelling structure, within every single word that it's related to, they were able to get down to H-Y-P-N. Hypnic mm -hmm. was the key word there, uh, nice. because it was the first one that we found that did not have that O. And, and what, was it, what did it mean again? You, had a great, you told me So, that. it comes from a, fr a medical phrase called hypnic jerk. Yes. And a hypnic jerk is an involuntary yeah. like twitch yeah. in, your in your sleep, because yeah. H-Y-P-N means sleep in Greek. We, we, I remember emailing with you about this, and. I was saying, I my guess is O S I S is is a suffix, and I had some evidence. Perhaps it's editable or editable, analyzable, um, and O T I C. Perhaps it's O T E plus I C. But this idea that we don't have to be, um, we don't have to get all the way down. We just have to have possibles. Oh, that's right. And then Gina's book we used to, so to come up. So we with used something. Gina's book to help us with this too, because we weren't sure about some of the affixes the affixes we weren't sure about osis we weren't sure about ic and otic and luckily there was one right. no, matrix remember. in here the bi matrix sorry I yeah and i remember the gn one too that was right yeah. so we used this to realize that osis can be a suffix. Uh, symbiosis. We use this <laughs> to see that O can sometimes be the connecting vowel, but it doesn't mean every single time it's a connecting vowel. So you have O-S-I-S, you have O-U-S, and then in other cases you do use a connecting O. Right. O-T-I-C, we found was a one. I-C was one. Nice. Interestingly, O-T-I-C, we may push Gina on this one, and see if because it's o -T. Pete was thinking that there's an O-T-E suffix, which there is, and then it could be O-T-E plus I-C. Yeah, and that, Kids didn't get to there. They yeah. did see O-T-E plus I-Z-E. Yeah, yeah. But that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Because these are all still, yeah, yeah. you know, reasonable spelling components. A absolutely, absolutely. Um, so needless to say, we did that in the first two of the three sessions. Mm -hmm. In the third session, we get into the fourth question, which is on the sheet. What are the sounds that matter? Mm -hmm. What are the phonemes? So again, I came back knowing I was going to do that Y. Right. So here we come back with the Y, and we ask, what phonemes can you make with the grapheme Y? So building their understanding that each grapheme can make multiple sounds. I think that's really key for their own spelling development. Um, so basically, this chart was completely blank when we started. There were just four rows and four columns, or five rows and four columns. So you have the phonemes in initial Y, medial Y, final Y. Those were not on there either. Okay. And how it works is I have made, you know, a handful of, uh, of these stickies and I hand them out to the kids and then I say, okay, come on up, put it where you think it belongs. Nice. And they have no, they have no idea what's going on. So <laughs> someone might just put it in a box and I'm like, great, good yeah. guess. Yeah. And then if I, if I, you know, if it's not correct, I'll move it. Yeah. After we get like two or three going, I ask them when they come up 
to explain why they put it in that box, which mm -hmm. is really important because then it reveals their thinking and it's making sure they have a, you know, some sort of coherent reason or they're trying to come up with a coherent reason for mm -hmm. why they're putting it where it is. Mm -hmm. And from that, they, we were able to like figure out where they all go and then decide how they're being organized. So in this case, we had phonemes here. So this is IPA symbology. Um, and we're splitting the words up into initial Y, media Y, and final Y. Mm -hmm. This is helpful because initial Y is the Y is always at the front. Medial Y is it's somewhere in the middle of the word. And final Y is it's at the end of the word. Mm -hmm. And this is helpful because it's starting to create some data and understanding patterns within the Y grapheme. Like, and where do we often see, within the words that we found, where do we often see words that have a Y in it? And, and they're going to be more final Ys or initial Right, wise. right, right. So you're not saying this is a complete chart either. This is no, just where you're at this now. This is a work in progress. And, and as you can say, kids decided to add their own words afterwards. And that, that was one of the things I thought was cool about this is that you can have multiple words here, but you don't have to see them all at once. So if a kid put a word up, their word isn't gone. It's just that only, it's not too much visual noise. Yeah. And where did you, how did you know these symbols? Where did you get those symbols from? Uh, there's a... Teaching English Wikipedia engine. Mm -hmm. it's, good. it's like called Tefalpedia. Okay. And on Tefalpedia, <laughs> that's been my go to resource so far on figuring out all the different sounds that a, a, a given grapheme can make. And you, and you have the grapheme cards from, from Gina too that would be good for that, right? Like the Y, the y card should right. have lots of this information too. Right. And yeah, and that's another good point. The, yeah. the Lex cards from Gina would yeah. be perfect for yeah. that. Cool. So, and the other thing that I, I just noticed, just in terms yeah. of like the structure, is so this was your most recent investigation. But, but yeah, I can show you what was going on before that. So, so what we do is each week we just keep them here so that we have them archived. They're ready to go. If, a, if we need to re-reference anything, if a kid is you know making an error or a misconception yeah. that is something that we've visited before, then we can come over here and go back in time. I always see love what we moment and momentum. That's one of my favorites. So, M O M E N T was one that we looked at, yeah. and then from there we got to uh, yeah. look at some. In this case, we were looking at both the grapheme E uh -huh. and all the different phonemes it could make, and then the phoneme uh, the schwa, eh, the schwa, because we we were looking, in, we were curious yeah. about that schwa. Yeah. So that schwa became like, how can we? What are the different ways nice. we can make a schwa? Sound? Nice, nice. Um, but this was a precursor to this. We hadn't discovered this method yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Lynn Anderson taught us this method. So yeah. we were still in the woods. We were still trying to figure out what's <laughs> yeah. the best way of doing this. Not to say this is the worst, yeah, but yeah. this one has been the most organized and coherent. And you're built so, in that phonology of lesson that she, Yeah. Uh, I guess it's the, 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 the orthography of, not the, and, yeah. And then we came to... So we looked at another phoneme. I'm trying to remember. I think this came from this one because, yeah. Ways to write E, it looks like. We were curious about this yeah. phoneme, E, and now we're looking at all the different ways to do E. And we, this is a similar yeah. similar chart as this one, except so rather than being organized by graphing. phonemes, this time we're doing graphemes and all the different yeah. graphemes yeah. that can make an E sound. Hey. Cool. So then we flipped it and did it you know, the opposite way where we're gra Organizing it by phonemes. It's just awesome, and and yeah, sure, just tra you know, kind of recording the trail of stuff. Um, and I like that you know, I know you were into the YI change recently, so you see this uh, candy. This, candies. Yeah, this actually came before our YI uh, conventions lesson, so that yeah. was a nice lead-in that that yeah. happened to be there. Very so we were cool. able to make that you know, yeah. show that like kids were interested in that as well, and like that helped draw them into that. Well, thank you very much, Sam. It's, it's awesome to see how these things are growing. And it's been great to work with you on a few, too. All right.